What's up guys, Jace 2 cents here and I'm gonna bring you a tutorial today. Uh, hopefully that'll help a lot of newbies with PC gaming get a little bit more out of their hardware without having to spend any money whatsoever. I've done a series like this like several years back, but there are so many new people to the channel and so many new gamers to the PC space that I decided just to do one that I think will, even if you're a, a, a not a beginner, you might be able to benefit from today's video. So today, we're gonna talk about how to get more FPS from your graphics card for free. Free being the keyword there. You have to already have a card. If you don't have a card, then that's not free. Let's just steal it, but then that's... I like boats. So much in fact that I bought this boat, the USS Iowa. Mm. You, you can't own this boat. Well, in World of Warships I can. World of Warships is a free-to-play, thinking man strategy game where you get to take command of some of those iconic vessels of World War I and World War II. Vessels like the USS Iowa. World of Warships recreates their ships by using actual historical photos and 3D scans of the actual ship in real life, like the USS Iowa. But battleships aren't all that World of Warships has to offer. In fact, they've got a completely revamped carrier playstyle where now you get to command squadrons of fighters carrying out rocket runs, torpedo runs, and bombing runs to devastate your enemy. Just like the USS Iowa can devastate its enemies using its 16-inch turrets. We get it, Jay. You really like the Iowa, but there are more ships than just the Iowa in World Warships. You mean like the USS Langley aircraft carrier that you can get for free along with 300 doubloons, 1 million credits, and 3 days premium time by using offer code PLAYLANGLEY2019 and by using my link in the description below? And not only that, you get the free actual USS Iowa right behind me if you use my offer code. You don't get the actual ship behind you. Well, that other stuff sounds pretty nice. I like folk. Now we recognize around here that not everyone can afford 2080 Ti's. In fact, you're very lucky if you can afford one of these. Um, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use our trusty RTX 2060 and not even a 2060 Super. We just chose this one because it's the start of the 20 series. It's got an AMD equivalent with a 5700 uh, non-XT. And what we're gonna show you now is when you're GPU bound, which means when your graphics card is what the system's waiting on to render any more frames, I wanna show you how you can get a few more percent out of it without doing the scary method of overclocking. And now the people I'm talking to in this video have many very experienced, very power user followers on this channel. I'm not really talking to you guys, but you can watch and follow along and maybe even give some additional tips and tricks in the comments below if you guys can think of anything that I've missed here. But what I'm doing it's kind of recreating a very common scenario that a lot of people don't realize simple things that can improve your performance and things you're doing that could be hurting your performance and you're not even aware of it. So we've got our test system here. It's an 8700K, 16 gigabytes of RAM. What that's doing is it's causing us to not have a CPU bottleneck, but we are GPU bound. That's different from bottlenecked. So we're also gonna make a lot of car references here because I'm a car guy. And basically what we're doing is we're dynoing our graphics card. And the dynamometer is whatever test we choose to try and validate our results. Now, in terms of results validations, there's lots of different ways you can do this. There's 3D Mark, there's you know Fire Strike and Time Spy and all that. You could use actual gameplay, but the problem with actual gameplay is back-to-back -back, um, consistent results is very difficult on something that's not on a track. So synthetics are the best way to allow us to actually measure differences in performance with making changes. Uh, but at the end of the day, your results are gonna vary depending on the games you play, the card that you have, the CPU you have. So what we're showing he you here in this video are things to think about and things to try, and then you can see whether or not it worked for you. So with some of that rationale out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you we're using Time Spy. I believe there is a free version that you can download. But we're only gonna be doing graphics tests. We're gonna be caring about what happens to our graphics score and then the average FPS. So we need to also get a baseline. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about what we've got open here. So we've got a Google Chrome uh, window open here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tabs. We've got sites that are reloading. You can see PC Mag just reloaded right there. Chrome is actually hardware accelerated. If you turn off hardware acceleration, it runs like crap. So we're running a bunch of tabs there that I know we're gonna be using some GPU. We've also got three game launchers going at the same time. None of them have any downloads happening right now, but the reason why I'm even bringing this up is because game launchers also have scrolling text and ads and, and game demos and stuff that are kind of playing in the background, which can also all use background process and also can be hardware accelerated, which can affect your performance as well. But I think a lot of people, because they play a lot of games, will leave those launchers up. 
Sometimes you have downloads going in the background can not only affect your ping in your games, but also your CPU usage. If you're playing a Steam game, it'll pause Steam downloads, but it won't pause EA downloads. It won't pause Battle.net downloads. It won't stop Epic Launcher downloads. And then if those go to install something, then that can definitely affect your performance. And a lot of the launchers like to start with Windows. A lot of new people that are new to PC gaming and may not be as experienced as a lot of my followers out there who are power users like myself. Um, these are tips and tricks to try and make it better for your graphics card to get as much performance out of it as possible without leaving anything on the table. Windows Defender is up too. Um, we find that that's actually a pretty big one when it comes to a hit to your performance, especially if you don't have a very fast CPU. So what we're doing here is we are creating just a situation that is what I think very indicative of what the average user would have going on their desktop. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and run and get our baseline. This is our dyno test. This is our before. We don't know how much things have improved if we don't have a measure or a baseline to measure against. So we're just gonna be doing a custom run here with graphics test one and two for Time Spy. And then we're only concerned with the GPU score and then the average FPS that's showing underneath that score. So let's go ahead and see how our baseline does. So here's our baseline, a graphics score of a 7709, graphics test uh, one has a 49.79 FPS, and graphics test two has a 44.56. So that's our baseline with everything running. Um, so there's some simple things we're gonna go ahead and do right here. Before I do, there's some, there's some adjustments we're gonna make in the control panel for NVIDIA. There's very similar settings to AMD. So if you're running AMD, then you can follow along with that, that particular control panel to do some very similar things. We're gonna start with closing all the launchers we don't need. So goodbye Origin, goodbye Battle.net, goodbye Google Chrome and all your tabs. So what we're gonna do now is just run this test again, and then we're going to see what happened to our score. All right, so our score went from a 7709 to a 7687. Believe it or not, that's still considered margin of error. We're talking like less than 1%. So what that at least means is that having the launchers open and then having those tabs and stuff going in Google at least didn't cause us a noticeable difference whatsoever when it comes to our graphics. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna close down Defender. Defender is one of those ones that we've seen plenty of times in the past cause us problems when doing our maximum uh, benchmarking and stuff which also means that you know that's usually when we're seeing some CPU bound stuff. So I don't know what's gonna happen here. I don't know if our score is gonna truly change, um, but all I did was just go into Defender, turn off all the real-time protection stuff. But one other thing worth pointing out too is that Defender does reset itself after boot, so it's gonna turn itself back on every time you restart the system. Um, I think you should leave it on, honestly. I mean, if, especially if the performance isn't really impacted right now. You can actually run a reg registry edit that will turn it off permanently until the next update where it will turn itself back on because they've caught on to Phil's tricks because that's what Phil likes to do. But depending on how much performance increase we see right here, if any, will determine whether or not you should leave it on at all. So as you can see, closing the fender actually didn't really have any improvement on our score. But that's okay because all we did was close some programs. And as you can see, at least in this particular setup, the CPU was certainly able to handle the programs running as well as the FPS that a 2060 can send at it. It'd be a different story if we were dealing with a 2080 Ti when it comes to having a CPU bottleneck. But that would then be a video about how to alleviate CPU bottlenecks, not so much about how to speed up your graphics card. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna right click on our desktop, we're gonna go to NVIDIA Control Panel. The very first thing we're gonna adjust here is going to be Manage 3D Settings, which is already highlighted. And we're gonna scroll down to where it says Power Management Mode. It's probably gonna say Optimal or Adaptive, depending on the graphics card that you have. And then we're gonna click Prefer Maximum Performance. The other thing we're gonna do is come down uh, about five spots below that, go to Filter Texture Quality, and we're gonna go from Quality to High Performance. That makes it sound like you're gonna get a fuzzier image by clicking that. I, there is no discernible difference whatsoever with image quality between quality and high performance. So when we are doing our, our max overclock testing and stuff, when we're trying to get every single point out of our score that we can, this actually ended up causing us several hundred points of improvement with the level of overclocking that we were achieving. So this is something I feel like you should always have on, on, your, um, on your graphics card. But what you might notice is that you might have a little bit higher idle temperatures depending on your graphics card. If you have a custom card with lots of fans, it's gonna be fine. But what it's doing is it's, it's not being so stingy with uh, the power limit and the power draw. Now, by just by changing those two settings, we're gonna go ahead and see what happens to our score. So we went from a 7690 to a 7854. That's a pretty significant score jump. 
Um, you can see we got a little bit of FPS improvement, actually about one FPS or one and a half FPS and then about a solid one on the graphics test too. You'd be surprised what one FPS improvement can do in a score on Time Spy. But that's not all, we're not done there. You remember that MSI Afterburner thing I mentioned? That's a free piece of software that you can download and it works with AMD and Nvidia alike. And you can do some very simple adjustments to actually get yourself um, a lot more performance. Now here's the thing, I'm talking about not overclocking. We're gonna do just a, a quick dirty overclock at the end for those that are brave enough to move some sliders. But MSI Afterburner, I get this question a lot. MSI Afterburner, all it does is read what the maximum values allowed are via the graphics card BIOS. So you can't hurt your graphics card by attempting to overclock using MSI Afterburner. The BIOS will not let you go farther in terms of voltage and power limit and power draw than the card will allow. Yes, you can go farther than the core clock can be stable. You can go farther than memory is stable. And then what will happen is when you restart your system, uh, if you have that little button checked right there that says startup, the little Windows button, if you have a stupid setting like plus 1000 on the core, which I don't think you can do anyway, but uh, then if you have that selected, as soon as Windows loads, it, if it can't get to the desktop because it's crashing before it gets there, then all you do is uh, force yourself to boot into safe mode, delete MSI Afterburner, and then you can restart the system and you're fine. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna click this little gear, which is gonna take us into our menu settings, and then we're just gonna go ahead and click unlock voltage control, unlock voltage monitoring, and force constant voltage. That's not gonna have any effect, quite honestly, on the amount of voltage being pushed to our system, but without unlocking voltage monitoring and stuff, we can't even see if we're getting voltage limits and stuff. Now the way GPUs work, including AMD and you know, both Nvidia, is they have boost algorithms. They have a logic in them that says if power limit and temperature and voltage are not at their maximums, then allow frequency to increase till either those maximums are met or the max table frequency is met. In this case, it's always frequency. Frequency is the thing that gets affected by any of those things I just mentioned. So what we're gonna do right now is we are gonna take our power limit. Everything you've seen so far is with these stock settings. Power limit to 100%, temp limit at 83. 83 is where we would start to see core clocks drop dramatically if we go above that. And then um, this is fan curve right there. So we're gonna go ahead and take our power limit and move it all the way to the right. And you'll notice temperature moves with it because they are linked. We're not gonna touch anything else. We're just gonna see what that, along with one other thing, fan curve. Fan curve is important. If you're asking for more temperature and you're asking for more voltage, let the fans do their job. It's like trying to, it's like trying to add all kinds of power to an engine but not improving its cooling. You're just asking for problems. So we can click this fan tab, click enable user defined, and then this is one I've already gone in and defined. It's a 50% idle and then it ramps up fairly aggressively, I can actually click that box and hit delete. That's a very aggressive curve. It's gonna ramp up very quickly. But at 60 degrees, we would be at roughly 75% fan speed. So just by changing those three things, power limit, temp limit, and fan curve, let's see what effect that had on our score. So our new score is an 8,037. We gained another FPS on both. I can't stress how hard it is to gain one or two FPS in these scores. The biggest thing we found with graphics cards today is temperature. The lower you can get the temperature, the longer it will maintain those higher clocks. The very first step down happens at like 25 Celsius, which is kind of ridiculous. So that's where you would be done. And it's up to you to determine whether or not the little bit of FPS that you've gained is worth the effort. Fortunately, it's not much effort. You can save these things in MSI Afterburner. They can start every time you start Windows. You're up and running every time. But because we're brave around here and we like to go for broke, we are gonna move these sliders. So core, vo core voltage is being moved all the way to 100%. I am gonna do plus 100 on the core. That's now allowing it to go 100 megahertz higher. I've never had a card from Nvidia that didn't do 100, plus 100. And then uh, for memory clock, this, believe it or not, has usually a bigger impact on performance than core clock. So we're gonna do plus 500 on this particular card because I know that the memory that's used in the Founders Edition cards can handle it. Again, your mileage is going to vary. So plus 100 on the core, plus 500 on the memory, and an increase of 400 points and an actual measurable increase in FPS because we were willing to move the core slider 
and the memory clock. This is the one that I have most fun with, and obviously this has the most improvements. Now you couldn't move those sliders for overclock and stuff without moving the temp limit and power limit. Those have to all kind of go together, otherwise you're asking for more core, but you're already limited anyway. So you have to move those together. We're still gonna see single digit FPS improvements in 1440 with this particular card. But if you're anything like us, you like to tinker. It's the same reason why I tear the engines apart on my cars and go for more power and stuff. It's completely unnecessary, but it's fun. So if you guys thought this video was helpful, why don't you go ahead and give it a like and maybe share it with someone that you think could benefit from this. And like I said at the start of this video, if you're one of those power users that have really good tips and tricks that maybe we didn't talk about here, that can give tangible improvements to people's gaming experiences on their cards for free, then please comment down below. But don't put links to things. We've already discussed what happens if you put links down there. Your comment disappears. It goes into the YouTube void. Thank you.